Well, we're continuing our talk uh, with Brian Draper, who's about to retire. I mean, it may be looked upon that you've had the good times, really, overall, you know, when there's been a lot of cash in the, in the, in the government and you've had the new equipment you required and that sort of thing. Now you're handing over the reins. Do you think it's going to be a different sort of fire service? Um, I sincerely hope it won't be a different fire and rescue service. We're working really hard to make sure that everything we do is fully justified. And, of course, um, when we go to... Um, Treasury or the Department of Home Affairs, we, ab we absolutely have to justify every um, expenditure decision that we make. But what you have to remember is, in terms of value for money, we're a very, very small fire and rescue service, and yet we deliver all the skills uh, and sort of abilities that very large organisations have to deliver. So for a small island, we deliver a, a vast range of skills um, that as I say, large organisations have to deliver and what you find in the UK, they actually deliver them now on a regional basis. So they will share some of the specialist teams, they will share some of the specialist equipment across regions. We don't have that as a luxury. With having the, the you know, we're surrounded by the sea, um, at, at the very best you could expect at least an, an eight to ten hour delay on any um, additional response other than that that could be brought in by helicopter but that is fairly minimal when you understand the sort of payloads that helicopters can deliver um, you're talking about eight or ten personnel and some lightweight equipment so the, the opportunity to have reinforcements coming from other services just doesn't happen in the island so we have to provide all of those things I've got firefighters here who not only provide all the skills of a frontline operational firefighter, but they, th they undertake things like uh, cylinder maintenance. All of our breathing apparatus cylinders, and we've got in excess of 140, they're all serviced and maintained by operational firefighters. All the breathing apparatus sets are serviced and maintained by operational firefighters. All of our gas tight suits all of our PPE, that's the clothing and equipment that we wear, is all serviced and maintained in-house because of the cost of shipping it off the island and back onto the island if we were to use an off-island service organisation. Now, large brigades in the UK, they do that as part of a contract where the company who supply those goods will come in with a van, take them away, service and maintain them. We can't do things like that. So it's all done from within. Well, this is the end of it for you now. Um, you were very honest in the interview we did some weeks ago when you were looking at the, the new recruits, and I asked you what you're going to feel like, and, you, and you, your answer was quite uh, genuine that you are really going to miss this. In a, in a, you don't know what to expect almost. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, it's, it's the right decision, uh, both personally and I think organisationally. I think it's healthy for an organisation to have a refresh. I've been the Chief Fire Officer for just over nine years, so I think it's important that new ideas come on board and, and the direction that the organisation is going and needs to be refreshed from time to time. But the flip side of that is um, I've got up every day and put a uniform on, um, so in many ways that's your sort of, would you call it a comfort blanket? I don't know, but I put my uniform on and I do the job. Um, so it will be quite strange. Um, what have you got planned? Part of that. Um, I've got lots of uh, things in the planning. Um, most notably is I'm um, doing some work with an organisation, British Cycling, um, to qualify as a coach, um, which I'm very interested in because I've got two young boys, um, both of whom are, are good quality cyclists. So um, I'd like to see that come to fruition and, and take some of the younger uh, sort of groups of cyclists who show real talent and, and prepare them and raise them for forming the junior and senior ranks here on the island and then perhaps who knows we might find another Mark Cavendish or Peter Kenyuk or uh, any one of the, the pro or semi-pro cyclists that we've got. Um, I just think it's such a fantastic um, sport to get into and be part of. Do you get adjusted for retirement? Do, do you go through some sort of course to move you from a working environment to this sort of life on the Gulf, you know, fairways or something? <laughs> um, I th I'm sure those courses are available. I haven't taken one because, as I said, uh, my intention is not to stop. I'm, I'm not a sort of 
a sit on my hands type of person. I have to be active and busy. So things are already um, in the pipeline and I'm, I'm in the process of uh, completing my course.